Hey, this is Ina, and welcome to the continuing series on the Paris Commune. And today I want to talk about Lenin and his views on the Commune. Now, as a Marxist, Lenin took an interest in the Paris Commune. And this interest really manifests itself in his uh, important work called The State and the Revolution, which was written during the midst of World War I and the, the Russian revolutions of 1917. And Lenin was really kind of reacting at the not just about the war, but about the the part his what war wants his fellow comrades in the Second International, who had rallied to the flag, who had rallied to support the uh, war effort during World War One, and had just given into nationalism. And Lenin is really resurrecting Marx's view on the state, which had been kind of buried by the Second International for quite some time. Because the parties of the Second International, the German, the French, or whoever, they're all electing people to the, their respective parliaments. They're getting people in. They're thinking, uh, even the so-called Orthodox, you know, if we just get 51% of the vote, we can have the revolution. We can bring upon socialism. That we just have to follow these tried and true methods, you know, of a legal, peaceful struggle. And even the more orthodox Marxists, such as uh, Karl Kotsky, were saying, we may be a revolutionary party, but we do not make revolutions. Well, in 1914, pretty much, with important exceptions, of course, these parties were, had all rallied to their respective flags and um, were engaged in chauvinism. And Lenin is resurrecting Marx's view on the state. Marx, of course, had said in his writings in, on France and the rise of uh, Napoleon III, that this state system is, the, the state of capitalism, isn't something the revolution can seize. It has to be smashed. And this is even more emphatic in the Paris Commune, when the existing state apparatus is effectively shut down, and a new worker state is put in place. And this is, of course, a state that is in the process of withering away. And Lenin is endorsing this. He's resurrecting Marx's views on the state, and of course Engels as well. And he's saying, in the midst of the Russian Revolution, we need a state of the Paris Commune type. Direct democracy, the people in arms, um, delegates can be recalled, they have limited salaries, no more than a skilled worker, and pretty much... Uh, Lenin phrases it at one point, uh, where every cook can govern. This is what he wants. This is what he's advocating. And he sees this embryonic in the Soviet form that had been developing in the, in the Russian Revolution, uh, direct democracy at the base. And this is really a repudiation of a lot of second international Marxists who were looking to parliament as the vehicle of change. Lenin is definitely looking at a more mass upsurge from below and doesn't see much use for the uh, old state apparatus. And Lenin is not just, Lenin's whole practice in a sense is based on how do we avoid the mistakes and the defeats of the commune. And we can really identify one is we need politics in a sense. We need a Marxist party, a party of revolutionaries by trade or professional revolutionaries. Because as we remember, the commune's leadership was quite divided, and it was really hard to have a centralized organization. And of course, for, the, for Lenin, the party is very important. Just read what is to be done, or most of his major works. And the Paris Commune, in a sense, was limited to, pa was limited to Paris, although there had been commune attempts. Lenin not just wanted a party, he wanted you needed to have an overall picture, nationally at least, though preferably international. And furthermore, the commune was isolated from a lot of the rural countryside of France. Lenin stresses very much on alliance with the rural peasantry, small and medium peasants to be exact. And furthermore, the commune was not quite as decisive on dealing with the counter-revolution. Lenin, especially after 1917, is they need to break the counter-revolution. It needs to be uninterrupted, and you just need to be on the offensive and to stabilize your position as much as possible. And Lenin is very much an advocate of this. 
And in a sense, Lenin, when the Russian Revolution lasts a day longer than the Commune, he's dancing in the street, to be quite literal. And now, obviously, the Russian Revolution presented a lot of other problems and contradictions that came up. And if you've seen my video on Trotsky's program of the left opposition, you know that there have been various attempts to deal with them. And the next video will deal with Mao Zedong and his view on the Paris Commune. What did Mao advocate? Because Lenin, in a sense, in the 20th, was the first major revolutionary in the 20th century of a Marxist persuasion to have his movement come to power and deal with a lot of the um, mistakes and the shortcomings and along with the triumphs of the Paris Commune and how do we repeat that in a sense, not necessarily replicate exactly. And Mao is going to take this a little further. So this is Ina. Until next time.